Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, COVID uh, briefing uh, for Friday. Uh, as usual, uh, we'll start off with, I think, what uh, everyone's interested in and start today's numbers. So uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Minister. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at the end of what has been uh, a very exciting and historic week. Since the media advisory yesterday, we have five new cases of COVID-19 in the province. There are three cases in the central health region, female between the ages of 20 and 39, a male between the ages of 40 and 49, and a male under the age of 19. All are travel related. There are two cases in the eastern health region, a male between the ages of 40 and 49, which is travel related, and a male between the ages of 20 and 39, which is currently under a public health investigation. There is one case in hospital, and the total number of cases in our province is 372. 341 people have now recovered with 27 active cases. In total, we have tested 69,461 people. With Christmas one week away, you are likely planning what the holidays will look like for you and your family. This year, we are all reimagining old traditions and inventing new ones. This holiday season will certainly be one that won't soon be forgotten. And while COVID-19 is the ultimate bah humbug, we can still find joy, even if our usual Christmas traditions look different. One thing is for certain, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are clever and know how to make the best of a poor situation, or at least find the humor in it. And I've seen many examples of this. We are creative and I wouldn't be surprised to see some new traditions invented this year that take hold into next year. It's this spirit that will help us, help us all this Christmas as we think of new ways to make it special. Whether that's making a video for friends and family who may be away, sharing a poem or story, picking up the phone or connecting virtually. Whatever other creative ways you come up with to connect with your loved ones will no doubt help, bring, help us during this joyful, albeit different, holiday season. As you plan these activities, I must stress the importance of following our holiday guidance. These are available on our website at gov.nl.ca slash COVID-19. I also note that this is the last weekend before Christmas, and while the usual hustle and bustle will again be different this year, as you are running your errands or finding that last minute holiday gift, remember the importance of physical distancing and proper non-medical mask wearing. Non-medical masks should allow for easy breathing, fit securely to your head with ties or ear loops, fully cover your nose and mouth, be clean and dry, and be comfortable and large enough to comfortably cover the nose and mouth with gaping. And while masks can make a good present, remember that you should not share your mask with others. Christmas is a time when we traditionally celebrate with family and friends, and while things will be different, we can find ways to make this year special. Christmas is really a feeling, and people will always remember how you made them feel. This season can also be a tough time of year for some, and the pandemic, no doubt, is making it more difficult. We need to remember these are challenging times. Let's make sure we are extra supportive this year. Reach out to those who may be alone this season. Our loved ones may be away and your thoughtfulness might just be what they need to put a smile on their face. You can make them feel special and included. A simple phone call or video chat might be just what they need. Take the time to relax. Do something just for you. Self-care is an important gift. Try not to put too much pressure on yourself or others. Everyone is coping the best way they can. The best present for some may be simply having some time to relax and unwind. And I think I can certainly relate to that one. I also want you to remember that you are not alone this season, so please reach out for help if you need it. The Provincial Mental Health Crisis Line and the Channel Warm Line are here for you. You can also visit Bridge the Gap with two Ps and the Department of Health and Community Services website for more mental health resources to support you and your family. Whether you are celebrating the season or looking forward to the new year, remember we must all do our part to protect ourselves and others from the virus. Continue to adhere to our tried and true public health guidance. Keep your close, consistent contacts to 20 or less this holiday season. 
maintain physical distancing, wash your hands frequently and well, wear a mask in indoor public spaces, and stay home if you are unwell, and call 811 if you have any symptoms of COVID-19. As a recap for those who may have just joined us, we have five new cases since yesterday's media advisory. The total number of cases in the province is 372. This holiday season will be different. As we begin to close the chapter on 2020, please continue to show each other love and kindness, protect and support one another, and hold fast Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you. Thank you uh, <clears throat> very much, uh, Dr. Fitzgerald, for your comments. Um, it is day 286 of the pandemic, or if you'd like a new clock, it is day three of vaccine rollout uh, in the province to uh, essential workers and ultimately uh, very shortly after to vulnerable populations. Before I start my comments today about uh, COVID, I'd like to say a, a heartfelt thank you to Mr. Colborne and the choir at Holy Heart for a lovely Christmas carol grant. Uh, they came to visit the department last year uh, and uh, the video uh, this year because of COVID uh, was as beautiful as the visit from last year. So thank you very much. And on that note, I'd also like to thank Beachy Cove Elementary for their Christmas video as well, which I received today. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you very much for the effort. Um, as Dr. Fitzgerald says, it has been an exciting week um, with uh, hope arriving in the province, somewhat ahead of schedule. Uh, we hadn't quite expected it this early. And so uh, we're working out some of the rough spots on the plan, which we had uh, initially thought we would be rolling out between Christmas and New Year or even in the the first weeks of January. Um, I think from the point of view of my comments, I would like to talk about some of the clusters that we've had. Um, these have been uh, uh, groups of uh, uh, positive tests. Uh, and one of the things that has become apparent is that the first person in there who we identify as testing positive is not always the first person to acquire the virus. And indeed may actually be the last. From the point of view of what we call contact tracing, uh, everyone knows that we look at people that uh, a positive individual may have come into contact with after the result of the, the after the start of symptoms. But we're also looking at now what's called backward contact tracing. And it would appear in a couple of the clusters, and particularly the one in Harbour Breton, which hopefully is drawing to a close, that backward step uh, tracing so this is probably related to ultimately travel uh, from outside of the province. I think that connection with travel there and the fact it predates the onset of symptoms or indeed the sequence of positive tests means that things like COVID Alert app, which will help you um, uh, uh, with an electronic form of memory, are something that would really come into its own here. The other issue around travel has been very much related to concerns people have expressed uh, around some of our media advisories around travel. How is it that people from outside the province are, are, are coming to the province? Uh, I think whilst I can't speak to the specifics of any individual case, because that would be inappropriate, uh, it's fair to say that non-residents could be coming here for a variety of reasons. The Probably the commonest and most frequent that we've seen is that of family of a resident Newfoundlander and Labradorian who have moved away for work and now live in other provinces or indeed other countries. And under circumstances of uh, family illness or bereavement, um, come back to the province uh, and unfortunately have um, collected COVID at some point along the way. Uh, these are seen and listed in our data as non-residents, for example. We also have another group uh, that are significant, uh, more so not for their numbers necessarily, but for the impact that they have in the province. Um, we have, for example, a, a piece of equipment uh, at the Bliss Murphy Cancer Center, which is crucial to ongoing cancer treatment. And yet it requires technical skills to um, keep going and, and to uh, have routine maintenance that we don't have uh, in the province at all. And indeed, I would argue, um, not in uh, parts of the country. So uh, you may, for example, see uh, workers needing to come to service such equipment or specialised uh, diagnostic equipment like our, 
our PET scanner or the cyclotron that goes with it. Uh, and again, if these people test positive, they show up as non-residents. Um, and they would appear in our figures. And we can't give the details of those because, again, it's inappropriate. We have people here still relocating permanently to the province. It is an attractive place to come and live and work. And our immigration policy as government has shown an increase in numbers. And these people initially will appear uh, under certain circumstances as non-residents. Uh, there are federal uh, issues as well. Uh, people with the military uh, who may do tech stops or uh, uh, come to collect uh, um, vessels or meet uh, vessels that would uh, also be regarded as not Newfoundland and Labrador residents. So you see the list is quite extensive and often quite particular. Obviously, people who have traveled who ordinarily live in this province have a right to come home, uh, and uh, they would show up um, as travel from other jurisdictions too. I think one of the, uh, the comments that I would also make is that because of the time of the year and with people coming home to provide care or coming back from work away, we will continue to see uh, greater numbers of cases, perhaps, than we have over the fall. This is to be expected. Uh, and I think uh, the, the concern from our point of view is simply that everyone follows the rules about quarantine uh, and listens to Dr. Fitzgerald's advice. But then uh, in the, the situation that we have had today, each of these clusters has been identified rapidly isolated, rapidly contact traced, and brought to a halt. So we've made our own luck, and we've had some extremely good results from public health and from the effort of the people of this province in following uh, things. But again, I would caution that we will see increased numbers, but that's no uh, reason for complacency. Um, we now have a, a schedule from uh, Pfizer about some further vaccine deliveries that will take us through into the new year. And we're hearing that whilst not approved, uh, Moderna is changing some of its restrictions about uh, uh, how it can be transported to make it easier to get into more rural or isolated communities. So there's more positive uh, news on the horizon. Uh, it is the holiday season. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald has asked us all to hold the line. We've done an exceptional job as a province. And you can see that when you compare us with other jurisdictions, even in Canada. It is the season of giving, and I think I would echo Dr. Fitzgerald's comments that maybe the gift of kindness is the one we can all give at really very little expense to everybody. Uh, and so with that, I'll, I'll draw this portion to a close and throw it open to Leslie to moderate the, uh, the media interest. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. For the benefit of our speakers, there are four reporters registered for today's call. The question and answer session will be conducted in two rounds where each reporter will have the opportunity to ask one question and one follow-up per round. Following this, I will ask each reporter if they have one final question. Our first questions are from Kellyanne Roberts with NTV. Please go ahead. Thank you. I know yesterday the three cases announced were all under investigation. I'm wondering if there's an update on that. Uh, yes, Kellyanne, there will be an update, and I don't have them written down in front of me, so I don't want to speak out of turn, but they will be in the advisory that comes out a little bit later. Great, thank you. And Minister Hagee, you alluded to that there's now a timeline or a better timeline on uh, the arrival of the Pfizer vaccine. I'm wondering if the public can be privy to some of that information. Uh, yes, certainly. I mean, it, it's not secret. What we're expecting is another um, uh, two trays uh, early next week. Uh, there will be uh, four trays, we think, uh, between Christmas and New Year. And then we should be getting four trays on a regular a weekly or 10-day schedule. Uh, so that will allow us to plan for, for rolling it out. At the moment, though, they have not relaxed their restriction that it has to be um, dispensed or, or, or used from the point of arrival. So once we get our um, uh, ultra-low freezers uh, across the province, uh, then uh, the vaccine will be taken there directly. Uh, rather than necessarily coming into St. John's. So the next location that I'm aware of outside of St. John's, which gets an ultra-low freezer, uh, and possibly within the next 10 days, will be Goose Bay. Uh, and then uh, there will be at least three more 
uh, in line, one for Lab West, one for Central, and one for Western. Just to clarify there as well, uh, each tray, is that 975 doses? Uh, each tray is um, nine, 1,950 doses. Uh, it's uh, 900. At, the math is there's five doses per vial, and there's 1,950 doses in a tray. Thank you. Our next questions are from Peter Jackson with The Telegram. Please go ahead. Oh, hi. I wanted to clarify, Minister, uh, a moment ago you said that uh, Moderna is changing its transport conditions. Was, was that a – did you misspeak? You meant Pfizer, did you? No, I meant Moderna. They have okay. already suggested that they will uh, be comfortable transporting the uh, vaccine uh, uh, for part of the latter end of the distribution chain, uh, not frozen. Uh, so uh, that is a difference from what we had expected before. Um, uh, so that will make it uh, easier to, uh, to move around into rural and, and isolated areas. Uh, from the federal uh, table, I can tell you that the territories are going to get uh, pretty well all of their vaccine in the form of Moderna. Uh, and I think this will make their life very much easier and certainly will help us uh, with uh, Labrador and the coastal communities. Okay, thank you. Um, and the other thing I was curious about is, uh, as, as other vaccines come online next year, uh, will recipients be informed which one they're getting? And I ask that because, uh, for example, the non-mRNA ones seem to have a lower success rate. Um, Janice, do you yes, want to deal we, with that? Or? Uh, yes, uh, so... Obviously, anyone uh, who's getting a vaccine will be advised of which vaccine they will be getting, um, and that is um, uh, something that um, is, is standard practice. Okay. That will now be available electronically as well, so anyone with access to uh, the Healthy NL viewer will ultimately be able to, to determine that uh, uh, through, um, uh, through that source too. Okay. Our next questions are from Peter Cowan with CBC. Please go ahead. Minister, you mentioned some hiccups in the rollout. I'm hearing from healthcare workers who have ended up spending hours and hours on hold to, to try and get their spot booked in order to get the COVID vaccinations, and then sometimes they get dumped off the phone lines completely. Uh, I'm just wondering why the process is sort of relying on a phone-based system rather than an electronic scheduling system like we saw with the flu vaccine. Uh, two reasons. Well, one is the understanding I had was that the call centre would be involved, but that doesn't start until the day we actually expected to get the Pfizer vaccine in the first place. Uh, so uh, we, that, that was one of the hiccups of which I'm aware. The other piece is that, if you remember, people are being triaged on the basis of NACI guidelines as to who will get their vaccine in what order. So uh, given the fact that at the moment it's... Uh, by Pfizer's insistence restricted to Eastern Health uh, and pretty well the Health Science Centre, there needs to be a discussion as to what area of uh, the healthcare system a particular caller would work in. So we're focusing initially on the COVID unit and on the, those public health and CDC nurses who would be in contact with people who may have uh, active COVID uh, and then kind of work outwards there to, uh, you know, ICU, um, uh, respiratory therapy uh, emerge, these kind of places. So there is a discussion that has to be had uh, rather than just like with the flu where it's a self-scheduling uh, self approach. We're seeing in the states that people are able to get, and rather than usual five doses out of a vial, uh, pharmacists have been able to get seven doses. Uh, have we been able to stretch the doses similarly? What's the status here? So we've been, uh, we're aware of uh, being able to get six doses out of a vial. Um, and certainly, um, you know, we're, we're going to look at that. And uh, um, that is something that we're investigating at the moment um, to see if that's possible. Okay, thanks. Our next questions are from Richard Duggan with BOCN. Please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Dr. Fitzgerald, in, or sorry, Dr. Hagee, in your opening comments, you mentioned uh, backward contact tracing, uh, specifically in terms of the uh, Harbor Breton uh, cluster, and uh, you said that you, that would lead you 
lead you to believe that ultimately those cases are travel related. Um, I just wanted to clarify, has a source been identified for that outbreak and what exactly is involved in backward contact tracing? Well, backward contact tracing essentially works on the premise that the person who you're talking to got the virus from somewhere and it emphasizes trying to do that backward tracing uh, uh, earlier uh, than later. Uh, and it's kind of been labeled by some as the cluster busting approach uh, because it has yielded significant benefits uh, if you can find uh, uh, a source that could be, for example, a super spread. And we certainly haven't seen that here since the spring uh, or winter, uh, to be honest. But my understanding is that uh, thus far, every cluster that we have had in the province can ultimately be traced backwards uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, a, a travel source uh, who seems to be the source of the virus, even though that uh, traveler may not have been the first person to test positive. Thank you. And uh, uh, it was mentioned that we've begun, uh, we're on to the third day of uh, vaccinations. Uh, I was just curious, how many healthcare workers have been vaccinated to date? My understanding is they were doing around 160 yesterday and expect to do the same today. They will be uh, vaccinating through the weekend and obviously we'll have more accurate figures uh, uh, by, uh, by Monday or Tuesday of next week. I think Wednesday was a day when uh, really they just did their first uh, kind of three vials worth. So there was only 15 that I was aware of on, on uh, Wednesday, but I may be misspeaking there. I can certainly get you the detailed numbers. Thank you. Our next questions are from Kellyanne Roberts with NTD. Please go ahead. Um, thank you. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald, when we start to see our case numbers rise in terms of the daily numbers, mind you, it's still very low in comparison to other parts of the country, but uh, five today, three yesterday, how concerned are you? So at this point, you know, we our cases are uh, travel related um, and people are isolating um, it's fairly well contained that we've had, uh, you know, occasional cases of spread to a close contact, but by and large, we're not seeing that spread outside of the household. Um, and so, and when we have, we certainly have been able to, um, to be able to uh, get a hold, get a control of that and, and prevent uh, further onward spread. Um, so at this point, uh, we expect to see cases. Um, we expect to see travel-related cases with regard to the epidemiology elsewhere. It only makes sense that we will start to see more travel-related cases. Um, and I think this is the, um, you know, this is a realistic expectation that everybody um, should have. And uh, if we continue to do what we've been doing, if people continue to um, you know, isolate when they, when they come here, um, if people uh, hold fast to those um, tried and true measures that we've talked about, physical distancing, making sure you're wearing your mask, washing your hands well, staying home if you're sick, get tested if you're sick, um, we should be able to uh, be able to handle what comes our way. Thank you. And it was noted the first day we began to call the vaccine, so two days ago, um, that 28,000 people is essentially the goal by the end of the first quarter of 2021 to be vaccinated. If Moderna is to come online before um, that period, is that still the goal or are we increasing that goal? That goal would go up uh, with every new vaccine that comes out. Uh, we, I think, are expecting somewhere of the order of 9,000 doses of Moderna. Uh, and uh, that, again, is... Uh, assuming the uh, approval process proceeds uh, for the first quarter of uh, 2021. Thank you. Our next questions are from Peter Jackson with The Telegram. Please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, hi. I'd like to just follow up a little on Kellyanne's question. Uh, so do the new estimates of positive doses, uh, the certain number of trays every week or 10 days, does that change your your outlook for March, the 28,000 by March? No, so no. We, yeah, we, we've been allotted um, a certain amount of vaccine for the first quarter. Um, so all of the vaccine that's coming is from that allotment of the first for the first quarter of 2021. Okay, so that's not a new estimate. No, no, these are all from our allotment. 
Okay. The, 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 um, for the information of your, your uh, readers, Sir Peter, the, the vaccine is bought nationally and distributed on the basis of population to territories and provinces. Okay, thank you. Um, I also wanted to um, ask about New Year's Eve. Uh, I think we are going ahead in St. John's with fireworks. Are you worried at all that well, people are ringing out this Anos Horribilis that uh, they might just let their guard down? So, you know, things can be done safely uh, if people stay in their cars, in their vehicles. Uh, certainly that can be, um, we can all enjoy the fireworks, but, uh, you know, we have to stay uh, stay in line with those guidelines that we have, not going, mixing with people outside of your bubble, um, you know, keeping your distance, um, and uh, and then hopefully everybody can enjoy. Thank you. Our next questions are from Peter Cowan with CBC. Please go ahead. Dr. Fitzgerald, uh, I've heard from people who are worried because they look on social media and they see people posting, hey, I managed to come for the holidays, uh, you know, even though they live in other parts of the country or even the world. Can you explain what exactly is the criteria on giving exemptions? If someone says, hey, I just haven't seen my family for a long time and I want to visit, is that the sort of thing you're approving? I know. So there are criteria for uh, exemptions to travel to the province and uh, they are outlined on our web page. But, uh, you know, we've had uh, from the beginning, we've allowed uh, visits for or people to travel here uh, when there's been, you know, critical illness or um, end of life um, illness in a family member or if a family member just uh, requires care that can't be provided by anyone else. Um, we've also allowed people to come in if they're relocating. We've allowed people to come in if they have significant illness and need to have care themselves. Um, and we've allowed people to come in if they are, um, if they have employment here. So, um, you know, there are a, a number of reasons why people would be allowed to enter the province. And, um, and so sometimes people say, I'm here and I'm visiting the information that you know, is provided um, to the travel exemption team, um, visiting just for the purpose of visiting would not be considered a reason for exemption. Um, so, you know, what someone says on social media and what um, their true reason for coming is may not be the same. You know, may, people may not want to give all that kind of personal information out, but um, so the, those are the exemptions. Um, that we would give here. There are a few others as well, but uh, they're on our website. Newfoundlanders and Labradorians have been watching the case numbers every day. Uh, I know a lot of people are also interested in the numbers of vaccinations as well. Will you be routinely putting out the number of people we've had vaccinated so at least there's a good number that we can watch for? Uh, I think... I we... don't have a problem. Yeah. Sorry, Jen. No, I was going to say we will be reporting a number of vaccinations as time goes on, and that is something that, uh, you know, the Public Health Agency of Canada is expecting us to report to them as well. We do that for flu shots as well. I mean, we're we're up to uh, we will be up to two hundred and seventy-five thousand, I think, by the end of next week. And we report our, um, you know, we we um, let people know how our childhood vaccinations as well. So. Reporting vaccine rates is a, a standard <coughs> practice. Okay, thanks. Our next questions are from Richard Duggan with BOCM. Please go ahead. Dr. Haggy, uh, just a few minutes ago, you mentioned some of the, the numbers of healthcare workers who have been vaccinated so far. Um, have we begun bringing in healthcare workers from outside the metro area for vaccinations yet? And if so, how's that working? Uh, not yet. Uh, we have not worked our way, as it were, through the, uh, the COVID-related staff at Health Science Centre in St. Clair's. Um, I think our main problem is really around Pfizer and Public Health Agency of Canada's uh, uh, restriction. Uh, as, soon as, they, uh, as soon as we can uh, put freezers in other areas, uh, and as I said, I, I may have mentioned the sequence uh, earlier on, uh, we will then start to distribute vaccine to... Um, high priority groups in those areas. But true mobility really requires um, Pfizer to kind of let us off the leash a little bit. 
in terms of how we move our vaccine from those depots. challenge with Pfizer vaccine is you really need to focus on uh, uh, who you're going to give it to and how many you need to, to send and by what modality, because otherwise there's a significant potential for wastage. So um, uh, we haven't been able to roll it out yet because of uh, Pfizer and uh, PHAC's uh, uh, restraint. Thank you. And we've seen a number of cases over the last uh, little while where the initial report would say that uh, a case or the source of the case is under investigation and hasn't been identified yet. And then the next day, we would find out that it's travel related and that person had arrived from outside the province. I'm curious because uh, that information would come from uh, initial conversations with, with that case. So, Dr. Fitzgerald, I'm wondering if you could explain sort of the process and why that information would not be immediately available. So most of the times it's just because the, the time that we got notified of the, uh, of the case uh, is so close to when the media briefing is, uh, or when the media availability goes out, which goes out at a regular time every day, um, we just, uh, the public health team just hasn't had the opportunity to complete their initial investigation, that's all. Thank you. I will now go back through each reporter to see if you have one final question. Kellyanne Roberts with NTV, do you have a final question? I do, um, both for the Minister and Dr. Fitzgerald. What are you looking most forward to for this holiday break that I'm anticipating you'll get some of? Um, I'm just looking forward to curling up um, in front of the fire and not having to do anything for a couple of days. <laughs> Minister Haggie? Uh, I don't think I'm really that different from uh, Dr. Fitzgerald. It would be nice if the phone didn't ring. Thank you. Peter Jackson with the Telegram. Do you have a final question? Peter, you might be on mute. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Sorry. Um, I, uh, this is a question that I could have asked right from the beginning, but I'm not sure why you use the 20 year age span for, the, um, for young adults. Uh, like you say, 20 to 39, and then you go into to, uh, 40, 50, 60. Why is that? Uh, it's just kind of the standard uh, age groups that we we use um, and uh, so that you'll see that in a lot of different things not just uh, in infectious diseases okay thanks Peter Cowan with CBC do you have a final question I do not just wishing everyone a uh, happy holidays since I'm gonna be taking some time off so this is the last briefing for me for a while enjoy your time Peter yes. thanks Happy holidays. Thanks, Peter. Enjoy. Richard Duggan with BOCM. Do you have a final question? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I guess Dr. Fitzgerald or Dr. Haggy, either of you could answer. Um, we're like, like we've mentioned a bunch of times over the course of this briefing, we're nearing the end of what's been a wild, wild year. Um, we've been praised for our COVID response uh, internationally. Uh, we've kept cases low. I, overall, how would you characterize or describe the public's response over the last nine months? I think we've been, um, you know, we've been very grateful in public health for the public's response to um, what has been a very challenging time. And, uh, you know, we've said many times that we are where we are because the public has listened and because uh, people have taken this seriously. So, um, you know, uh, the vaccine on the horizon is, is, you know, makes everybody feel wonderful. It gives us reason to hope, but we do have to hold on for a little bit longer and, um, you know, hopefully it won't be too long and, and we'll be on the other side of this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Minister, do you have any final comments for today? I think in actual fact, the best final comment came from Dr. Fitzgerald in answer to uh, Richard's last question, quite frankly. Uh, we have done well. Uh, we need to continue to do well. 
Uh, and I think we can at the end of this year, as we see out the old year, uh, year and, and look to the new, uh, give ourselves a bit of a pat on the back for uh, provincially having worked really hard to stick together to, to do all the right things and do the right things right. So um, uh, I think on that, uh, Leslie, I'll, I'll close off and uh, look forward to uh, meeting with you all again on Monday. Thank you, Minister. Take care, everyone. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day.